Um, hi, my name is Emily Newsom, and I'm going to be talking about the um, some work that we're just kind of getting started um, with Lorzana, looking at the relationship between ocean heat and ocean carbon uptake across emission scenarios. Um, so perhaps a good place to start with this is actually outside of the ocean to mention this key climate metric, which is the transient response to cumulative emissions or TCRE. And what this describes is this relationship between cumulative carbon emissions on the x-axis and um, surface temperature change on the y-axis. Um, this is shown here for a bunch of different CMIP-6 models and an, under a 1% CO2 increase experiment. Um, and as you see, and kind of why this has gained so much interest is that this is a um, this nicely shows this quite linear relationship between these two properties. Um, and, and I should mention, this has been kind of widely discussed. Um, and so what this is telling us is that uh, a given pedigree of emitted carbon should induce the same amount of surface temperature change early um, in response to forcing as late. And it's been argued that this linearity owes to a trade-off between the rate of decay of ocean heat uptake and ocean carbon uptake in the ocean, both of which kind of decay to zero as the climate equilibrates. And so I think this nicely demonstrates the kind of essential role of the ocean in transient climate change, particularly through its capacity to absorb heat and carbon. And so um, a, a related and somewhat analogous relationship to TCRE exists in the ocean or um, has, has been presented in the ocean um, in a study a few years ago by Ben Bronzelayer and Lorzana, which um, describes the relationship between cumulative ocean carbon uptake and cumulative ocean heat uptake. And as you see, and, and as they showed here, um, there's also quite a linear relationship between these two properties, implying kind of a similar thing that we could describe total ocean heat uptake as a function of total ocean carbon uptake, a linear function. So that's kind of um, important to know, but I should mention a kind of key caveat of this study is that it's um, really only explored this at higher emission or monotonically increasing emission scenarios. So 1% CO2 increase and an RCP 8.5. So what we want to do today is understand if this relationship depends on emission pathway. So to do that, we're going to make use of these CMIP6 SSPs. Um, I'm showing some of them on the right, or I'm showing them on the right, um, my head. Uh, and uh, on the top is the emission rate, and below is the cumulative emissions for this range of different scenarios. And as you see, because they, they range these very different um, futures, that there's a quite a dis different range of uh, cumulative carbon in the atmosphere or emitted to the atmosphere by 2100. So what we want to ask here is, um, sorry, uh, what is the relationship of ocean heat and ocean carbon uptake under these other scenarios, particularly focused on mitigation scenarios, because um, while a lot of the more theoretical work has been done at higher emission scenarios, the hope is that our society might be on one of these lower emission trajectories. It's certainly of interest. <laughs> um, and for the second question we want to address is in this context, then, does the total amount of ocean heat uptake and ocean carbon uptake per increment of cumulative emitted carbon depend on the pathway of those emissions? Okay. So let's get into this. Um, what I'm showing here is the relationship of cumulative ocean heat and carbon uptake, carbon on the X and heat on the uh, Y. Um, and this is for an RCP 8.5 scenario. And I should mention here, this is, uh, I'll be just showing um, the CMIP-6 ensemble mean, just for simplicity going forward, um, which in this case actually is about eight models, but on average is about four for different um, scenarios. And as you see for this 8.5 scenario, we've um, recovered this quite linear relationship between these two properties that has been shown um, in the Bronze Layer and Xana study. So um, let's skip to the answer then about these. Oh, well, there we go. Let's skip to the answer um, about these other scenarios. So as you see at these lower emission scenarios in which um, emissions are not monotonic, the 
relationship between cumulative ocean carbon uptake and heat uptake becomes um, nonlinear. Particularly, ocean carbon ocean heat uptake continues to increase while ocean carbon uptake slows. So we're curious about why this is. Um, to, to better understand it, um, it helps to take a step back and think about the relationship of ocean heat and carbon uptake to emissions on a very simplistic kind of zeroth order um, level. So to do that, let's start with this um, linear response, uh, the simple linear climate response model, which relates um, the rate of ocean heat uptake as uh, to the rate of radiative forcing minus the radiative response of the atmosphere um, be, uh, of the radiative feedbacks um, at the ocean surface or in the surface climate. Um, then we can press on and describe this um, radiative forcing as a logarithmic function of PCO2 in the atmosphere um, times some constants and then do a little bit of simplification. Don't worry about the details. Um, the kind of key point here is that for this kind of back of the envelopes argument, we're showing that ocean heat uptake is more is is driven in part by the total change in atmospheric PCO2. This um, value here, um, through um, which is quite linked to the cumulative emissions. So how much PCO how much the PCO2 changes is dependent not only on what's happening now but the time history of that forcing. So what about carbon? We'll take a similarly simplistic approach, starting with this concept of the Ravel buffer factor. Um, I'm just gonna move my head. I think I'm getting in the way of my slides, but um, which relates the rate of change of PCO2 in the atmosphere to the change in, of DIC or carbon in the ocean, scaled by their background um, concentrations. We'll do some rearranging, um, describe the total anthropogenic carbon in the ocean as the rate of the DIC change times uh, ocean volume and make this approximation that we can describe total, uh, that we can kind of solve for the total uh, cumulative uptake of carbon, which this approximation is essentially saying at any given time, we're assuming that um, ocean carbon is equilibrated with, uh, at least in the surface with ocean PCO, or with atmospheric PCO2, which is of course an approximation. And also that the buffer factor is um, constant. Um, to get the rate of change, we'll just take the uh, time derivative of this. And uh, the kind of key point here is that ocean carbon uptake through this argument is more linked to the rate of change of atmospheric PCO2, which is quite tied to the emission rates themselves. Okay, so the argument is that even if the physics of carbon and heat uptake, once those properties are in the ocean is identical, which is, is not true, um, the key, the, the, the key point here is that the boundary conditions of that uptake is different. For carbon, it's tied to emissions through their influence on the rate of change of PCO2 in the atmosphere, while for heat, it's time to, tied to cumulative emissions through its influence on the total change of PCO2 in the atmosphere um, and the uh, influence of that on radiative forcing. Okay, so let's look at these properties, um, or these rate on the top left is the emission rate, and on the top right is the cumulative emissions from those different scenarios. And then we'll compare them to the rate of carbon uptake on the left and heat uptake on the right. So what I'm trying to show here is that while, of course, we're not getting um, the, a perfect correspondence between these, these uh, trajectories and the rates here, we capture a lot of the differences between these two um, through just the differences in um, their essentially their boundary conditions um, or things that are related to their boundary conditions. To get back to the um, cumulative relationship between, and I should say these, these um, field, these are both highly correlated in their um, shapes. So to get back to the relationship between the cumulative carbon and heat uptake, we have to take the time integral and then um, plot these against each other and we, we return here. And so what we've argued is that this curvature here ultimately comes from the fact that um, Heat uptake is tied to the cumulative emissions of while carbon is uh, uptake is tied to the emissions themselves. So there's this different kind of underlying dependence on emissions that really matters, especially at these lower emission scenarios. So now what we under, want to understand is how um, much the total uptake of these two properties depends on 
the pathway of emissions. So essentially what I mean by that is the sensitivity of total ocean uh, heat and ocean carbon uptake to cumulative emissions. If it matters, how the, the time history of how those emissions are put into the atmosphere. Um, and that's what we're looking at here. On the top is heat and on the bottom is carbon. And what you see is that there really is this different sensitivity of these two properties to emission pathway, to the cumulative emissions. Um, so what for heat, we'll start with heat. And I should say the curvature here is about 2050. So heat, well, the, there's this widespread insensitivity and it's showing us that it's strong, how much heat is taken up per given emitted pedogram of carbon um, is uh, quite different depending on the scenario by which that's put into the atmosphere. And it's quite um, far more efficient, more heat is taken up per a unit carbon emitted under mitigation scenarios. For carbon relative to heat, it's a lot more constant. Though like heat, there is begins, especially in these um, lower emission scenarios to be some curvature. So what we're showing is that um, in some ways, you could describe this as an efficiency of uptake per unit emitted carbon. Um, for both, it's higher under mitigation, but this is particularly so under heat. And I should mention this has been um, discussed for um, in the literature, it's been it's been found before, and is an important thing to keep in mind uh, as we move into the future. <laughs> so to back up, uh, in conclusion, uh, I'll reiterate kind of where we're coming from in this work, from the perspective that kind of one of the key roles of the ocean in transient climate change is its ability to sequester heat and carbon. But what we found is that the relationship between the total or cumulative uptake of heat and carbon um, depends strongly on emission scenario. So how much of a sink the ocean is to both of these properties depends um, on the scenario of their emissions. We found that lower or negative emission rates lead to greater decreases in carbon than heat uptake because carbon is more closely linked to those emission rates while heat is more linked to the total emitted carbon and has this kind of essentially more memory. Heat uptake per, um, when, when we looked at the sensitivity to pathway, we, for this kind of um, different, they're, because of their different underlying relationships to emissions, we found that heat uptake per emitted carbon is more sensitive to pathway, though both show this kind of robust, ability to be more efficiently sunk under mitigation scenarios than these high emission scenarios. So as I mentioned, this is kind of the beginning of this project. And so for the future work, we're gonna start to dig into all the things we left out, which is um, take a more than zero -th order um, under, kind of approach to understanding the role of ocean dynamics in, in this, um, the changes in ocean buffering and regional differences. And all of this is, in the hopes of better understanding how um, ocean heat and ocean carbon uptake actually um, together and the relationship to one another contributes to TCRE or transient the, the surface temperature response to cumulative emissions with a focus in mitigation scenarios. So thanks so much for your attention and any questions, please let me know. Um, that's my, my email is here. So let's see, uh, I need to stop recording.